Yeah, I could start if you want to. We can also wait a little bit. All fine for me. What does the public says? I think we sort of already. Yeah. We should we do a snapshot on it. Awesome. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can start sharing your stream and stuff. See if it cool. Yeah. Works. Oh sure. I mean, we kind of started before the whole meetup, right? As to um, just talking a little bit about like what of our personal motivations for being in the space, I guess. I guess okay. Venezuelan as a random German guy and so on, right? And like trying to understand our part in this whole craziness, and like trying to understand the difference between like I guess these. We always see uh, these like shorter cycles in crypto, right? Hey, there's like a bull market and there's a bear market. It's just like two days where like everything goes up and then everything crashes again. Um, I guess us here, um, I don't know, everyone, like it's it's super interesting um, and it's cool to make money and it's, it's funny to lose money and so on. And it's just money, right? Um, but I guess what we are here for is kind of these, like these things behind it, right? And you zoom out a little bit and um, let's take one example, like Uniswap, right? Like sometimes we talk about like public goods and public infrastructure. That's what, what stays, right? And for longer term, um, just short cycles and somebody makes money and they, that enables you to build something like Uniswap. But then everything crashes, but Uniswap is still there, right? And everybody can use it to exchange tokens. And maybe some of these tokens are like kind of useless. But maybe some of these tokens are really useful and somebody can actually use it to, you know, swap uh, stable coins and actually pay for their food somewhere in the world or send money to their friends on Ethereum, right? And that, that's really interesting. And I think maybe we can, well, I can sort of like pick that up with what we are actually building, um, which is, a, yeah, an airdrop tool. And it's, it's, it's really simple, right? And I guess our goal is just to... Uh, yeah, like simplify airdrops and let me share my screen and let me know if that doesn't work. But um, yeah, what we built and, and this is um, our prototype, which we should be able to release in a, in a couple of days on Rigby. Um, yeah, it, it just allows you to choose a community, right? Like a, a set of addresses in the end. Um, and here's the Figma. So for example, hey, there's like this set of addresses that owns CryptoPunk NFTs or, or apes or some other NFTs. Or there could be a set of addresses that, uh, you know, holds Comstack tokens or has contributed to Comstack. Um, and then you can click on one of these communities and you can continue, for example, dropping other NFTs to them or dropping um, EZ20s to them. And you can do that with any token really, right? So you, you start by entering your address and um, let me use the example one. An address and then you, that is the, the address of the token you wanna drop and then you could manually enter a bunch of addresses, a list of addresses or you could one of these communities and then Simply, okay, there's an error in the format apparently. Um, but then go on and, you know, launch that campaign, which is a smart contract, which allows anybody to, anybody in that list of addresses to go on and, and claim um, that token. So it's like really simple. It's just like simplifying airdrops, right, on the one hand. On the other hand, it's building this database of, let's say, communities could be, just holders of CryptoPunks, holders of these NFTs. But it could also be any, you know, builder or user of a dApp or investor into a dApp. Like really could be anything that you can track on chain, any action you can track on chain, or it could be anything that you just manually put in there, right? Could be a bunch of addresses, list of addresses and some metadata on them says, hey, I think like this, this address did something really valuable in the past and I want to reward it with some token, with some airdrop. And that way we can build a database of, you know, people that did useful things. Um, and we want to make it all open source. We 
wrote a small interface that you can actually upload your own list of addresses on GitHub and so on. That way, you know, like build this public public um, database of addresses that did useful, helpful stuff. Um, so really simple. And I think to come back to the whole like public goods um, idea and Uniswap example, um, I think in the in the end that's where everything is moving towards, right? Like we before this this AMA we talked a little bit about like airdrop hunters, which is an interesting idea where sort of everything started maybe with the, like Uniswap airdrop where every address that ever used Uniswap got these like four hundred tokens, and then maybe some there were some bots that sort of predicted that hey you could get some airdrop and that's why they set out with like a hundred addresses and they got a hundred times the amount and that might be unfair, right? But it's, it, it was a start. And then where everything in terms of airdrops moves towards to, um, was to look at on-chain data and to look at who are actually the most valuable users, right? Like who wouldn't just dump the tokens they get, but be part of the community. And I guess like the good example is also with Giveth, right? Giveth token that, hey, we don't want to people to just dump the token. We want them to use it in our ecosystem, right? To like give it to people in need or to actually list some projects for like people in need or to farm it and, you know, um, use it in our ecosystem. And I think what we are building with this, this database of, of addresses um, helps people that they don't need to manually curate these lists of addresses, but they can choose one of these, right? They can do their PR on our GitHub and um, they can like put it into a category and they can add metadata and so on. There could be like different, like one address in different lists and so on, right? And I think at the end also build some kind of identity for people. Um, what we also talked about is poor apps, right? Where you can, poor apps like themselves aren't worth anything, right? Like really, but if you got a bunch of poor ups, it, it shows that, hey, you went to this AMA, you did something for somebody, you went to DEF CON in Bogota, for example, um, and with time you have like 20 poor ups and then it becomes really your identity. It, it sort of brings these off-chain events or like off-chain rewards on the chain, right? And makes it trackable. I think that's sort of, there's a, there's a parallel to what we are building with this, this database. And, I think why I'm here today, like thanks, thanks for the invitation, um, is because like we look for two different, different target groups, two different kinds of users, which is one, we want like communities like Comsec to be listed on our website, right? Because people might want to reward you guys with their own NFTs or their years of twenties. And then of course we look for communities that want to do airdrops. Um, and I think Comsec. Uh, give it or like the wider community could be interesting for both. And if you know, if you have friends who want to launch uh, an airdrop or want to be listed in, in this bigger database or just want to help in general, um, yeah, it would be nice to, to start a chat. And um, yeah, I think that that's it so far for a pitch. Um, I would love to answer questions, get your feedback and so on. Thanks a lot. Nice. Uh, I, I definitely have... Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Marie. No worries. Uh, I just wanted to say awesome. Thank you for the pitch and also for, for showing us because for what I understand, this is an exclusive, actually. We, we are seeing it for the first time and uh, so we are some of the few that we can have the exclusive. Yes. Thank you for having VIPs. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing the, to the trusted seat. And of course, the floor is open for, for questions for Chris. Great, because I have some questions. Uh, what are what features are you looking to add next? Or I mean, obviously it needs to be polished, but do you have like a, a roadmap of sorts or things? Are are you open for suggestions or like what are you what are you looking to do next? Yeah, that's that's a good question. So we are always open for feedback and suggestions. I, I think one of our main goals right now is to get feedback and you know build for our first users because we're just, you know, drawing things out in, in Figma and maybe the way we think that features should work is not the way that our actual users think they should work. Um, so definitely like, just just be honest with us, just give, 
give us everything. We we can take like negative feedback and everything. Um, but in terms of like what our roadmap is, I think um, one thing is really important is like privacy, which could be interesting. But then it's probably it probably takes some time to you know like implement CKs and and allow people to uh, claim airdrops without being able to to track them. Um, but that's definitely super interesting, and I think something that motivates us to keep going, like these these small technical challenges. Um, and then in the longer term, I think what could be interesting is the problem of hey, like as somebody who airdrops, you don't want to just send people the yeah the the token, but you also want to reach them, right? You want you want their Twitter, their Discord, maybe their Telegram. You want some some channel to reach them, and it could be a protocol that incentivizes people to dox themselves. I call it the dox protocol. It's like, hey, like you should know that you get some reward, right? Like if something drops into your wallet, you probably won't see it because there's also like a hundred scam coins and so on. And like even tokens that, you know, if you want to sell them, then there's some, some bug and you lose all your money and you know, some scary stuff like that. But you, you want to be rewarded for what you do but you also want to know about that you got the reward, right? So what I want to do is to actually put my like Twitter DM somewhere, like make it public to anybody who rewards me. And I guess there could be this kind of marketplace. Again, there needs to be some like privacy guarantee and so on. But but I think that's like for us, like a longer term, that's where we want to go. Because that, that completes the picture, I think, where it's just, it, it's like on chain, but also off chain, right? Does that makes sense. Yeah. Nice. No, that's super cool. I, I, um, I think the privacy thing is interesting for sure. I feel like people will claim their airdrops whether or not they, um, are private or not because they have the incentive to, right? Uh, for the, not everyone, but a lot of people would, most people would. Um, what, one thing that as a, as someone like, for instance, we have the give token, right? Or we have TEC, like m m we, what would be nice is having a way to, I've been really happy with the give stream, right? And having this like airdrop where actually to get the airdrop, you have to come to the give website all the time. You got, you got a big airdrop, but then now you also are coming back to our website all the time and just collecting money, you know, because you get this stream. It's a lot easier to give out a stream of tokens that then creates, um, like, engagement after that. So, like, uh, a quest of some sort, like, integrating quests into the airdrop uh, thing, where it's like, uh, oh, yeah, you know, to get this airdrop, you anybody who's a, a member of these groups, they get this airdrop, and now... Uh, as a end user now to claim it, you have to do X, Y, Z. Uh, and also, like, could create, like, if you hosted it for other groups in some way, like, you have to follow the Twitter, you have to do this and that, and, and maybe go to their website and click the claim button that they have on their website somewhere. You know, uh, but then have your website be the place, the, the portal for those things and trying to create this like network effect, you know, of sorts uh, could be it is the direction that I would like to see as someone who has who has, uh, you know, who would be proposing to a DAO to say, hey, let's make an airdrop to some group. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And it would also Makes sense to do an our website. So, like, technically, anybody who wants to claim the airdrop, they come to one of our sites, right? Like, we do it as a service to host that claiming page, and then on that claim page, you could say, "Hey, you need to like retweet this to get the token, or do any kind of like action." Yeah. So that's that's really interesting. It's sort of like a problem for the project, right? Like to to say, "Hey, there's not just this." Um, yeah, we, we want to prove maybe that nobody civil attacks us, right? Even we have all this on-chain data and this list of address, but maybe additionally to that, we want to have another proof of identity, maybe. Yeah. Like, hey, you need to retweet this. Yeah. Yeah. And this follows the, the uh, and maybe you have to have so many 
Twitter followers or some kind of identity solution. You have to have a bright ID, and, you know, verified uh, account or something like that. Uh, I, and then the other the other suggestion is somehow connecting to Superfluid or Sablier or or some kind of streaming service or building your own. It's not actually that hard. Drips Drips is another one that just came out uh, where you're not actually giving people just tokens, but also giving them a stream so that as an airdropper, you know that they're going to have to think of, you know, it's easy to take an airdrop token and just sell it all. Like, I don't, I don't have the bandwidth for this thing. But if you give someone a token and then they're collecting it for the next several years, then it's like, oh yeah, this project, I have to remember this project, you know? Someone asks you about what the best charity thing is in crypto, you'd be like, well, give it, because I collect money from them every week, you know? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think there actually are some solutions for that. Like, in the end, it's sort of like a like a startup vested option, right? Where mm -hmm. you cannot dump it, and you have the incentive to stay active in that community and help your own token to increase in value. I think there's some like vesting contracts. I think there are KPI options, maybe by Uma. Right? Like there, there are some yeah. experiments, and I think I even read this one was a blog post or like a, a forum post about these kpi options but it kind of wasn't like okay experience and there's still some problems with it but definitely that maybe like streaming is actually the easy solution that, that's and, actually a good idea and vesting is a horrible narrative uh or what so? i should say is streaming is a great narrative right like the vesting is like hey Here's some tokens. We're going to give you 100 tokens. You get five now and you get the rest later. Right? Whereas streaming is like a, 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 an action, a flow rate. You know, you're, and so like you don't want to display the fact that someone, like, I don't know if you're like DAP node versus Giveth, right? Or using the same smart contracts, but in DAP node, it says like, oh yeah, you earned this many tokens. But we're holding them back from you, and you'll get them later, you know? Versus, hey, you earn this many tokens and a, a flow rate that will be streaming to you like a UBI. And I feel like that narrative difference, that story is like really, really critical. Yeah. Look, and um, I mean, if, if you are going to be the first users, then I guess it makes sense to just build it for you, right? <laughs> and um, depending on how easy it is, or like how long it takes in comparison to like vesting right to integrate but i mean streaming shouldn't be too hard to use like in the end you would probably drop to some sub contract and then it would just stream automatically right so yeah. yeah that would be interesting it makes it a lot easier for like for new tokens maybe it's not as important but for, if if you could go you could say you could actually be a dao to dao like you know, business where you say, hey, how about Uniswap? Um, do you want to airdrop to all the balancer token holders, you know, but with a stream? Uh, and they have to come to collect your stream, they have to come to Uniswap and make a trade. Or maybe you say that the other way, like, you want to airdrop to balance Uniswap balance, you know, and then like you could, you could actually make incentives that people, it would, for someone who already has a token that's successful, it'd be like, that sounds good, you know? Yeah, it's like a, like a longer term vampire attack, like a sustainable vampire attack. Yeah. And I think uh, Rabbit Hole uh, has had some success with this. And um, what's the other group where it's like people are getting tattoos of the projects on their face for getting, <laughs> and they get tokens for it? Have you seen that? Okay. Oh. <laughs> It's okay. it's crazy. It's like bounty. Yeah, it's like bounties for anything with tokens. But uh... awesome. thank you, Greg. Some face tattoos. <laughs> well, I I won't be the the first one there. Uh... <laughs>
Uh, if anyone else have a, a question for Chris or, or any feedback, I, I, I love how, how we already like somehow building together <laughs> uh, with the drop list. Yeah, nice. So maybe other people have some more questions. Yeah. Uh, Chris, if, if you don't mind, you can drop the Discord uh, link on our um, community hall chat. So anyone can can join and, and follow your, the, the journey of the drop list and, and see how how it evolves. <laughs> so just follow the Discord link and the Twitter link. Awesome. I want to I want to say um, well you you already described the, the roadmap but, but what is your like ultimate vision for it? What's your ultimate goal? with the project? Mm, I mean, I think like we, in our sort of like friend circle, I think we all built like a couple of projects, which we see the world coming, like we, we share vision, I guess, right? Sort of vision of, of crypto that like, you know, good behavior gets rewarded, I think. Um, so something like, uh, how do we incentivize people to build common goods? Where normally there's this problem of the commons, right? That, hey, if I do something, it has like way higher cost for me, although it, it spreads the, the use to everybody else, right? Like something like Uniswap. Um, everybody can use it for free, um, but somebody has to build it. And what's incentive to actually start building it? Or another example is like all of these like open source projects, libraries, right? Like SSH or whatever. It's like this meme that some guy in Utah maintains this like open source project. Um, and suddenly if he stops, then you know, all the world's biggest fortune 500 companies that use it, they, because they never paid, like they will get hacked because they never paid for this like security library that's open source. Like how can you incentivize people to build public good infrastructure. I guess there's like a, a couple of parts to it. And I guess you guys also build like your part for it. And what we do, hey, it's just like a small airdrop tool and it's just a nice UI for what people do anyway already. But I think giving that nice UI um, or like building that nice UI just enables more people to do it, right? And it sort of nudges everybody into that direction where we think it's like more useful for everybody instead of like building like some closed source uh, solution or whatever, right? Like, yeah, um, so the, the bigger vision is to help this, I guess our personal uh, bigger like crypto vision to, you know, solve this like big incentives problems in the world. Um, and let's see how far we come with this small tool, but in the end, we, we're not gonna stop working on crypto stuff, right? And I think this small tool already can help right now in, in crypto to yeah, touch people towards that, that vision. Awesome, that's, that's right. <laughs> I mean, starting with a small tool, but having uh, created a, a, a way of thinking of, of matters that not everyone has it in mind, like how do I distribute that dirt drop and in a way that is interactive with other DAOs or all that stuff. It's, it, it, it might be small, but it is important at the end because in blockchain and especially with Web3, we are doing a lot of stuff for the first time. And so every little tool. Uh, uh, Gerling, I, I saw you, you open your mic. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so I'm just trying to make sense. I don't want to ask the very basic questions because I'm humiliated, but just tell me, is this kind of a reputation manager that you're building? Is, could you translate it like that? Yeah, I think, and, and I mean, there are no stupid questions, right? <laughs> um, so uh, this, this one side, which I showed like this list of addresses or like these different boxes, right? With, CryptoPunk owners is like a list of addresses that owns CryptoPunks. Um, but it might as well represent a list of addresses that 
um, yeah, have some reputation, right? And then it's just a list, list of addresses, but you can give it a title. And that kind of title could be, hey, it's like something personal like my friends, and I want to airdrop to all of my friends um, or my, my Twitter followers. But it could also be, you know, to, to any other kind of reputation, to like um, anybody that did useful things somehow at some point in crypto. Um, could be just tracking some on-chain behavior, right? Like anybody who used Uniswap, a really simple example. Maybe you know this website Hive.one, which tracks sort of like Twitter influencers, I guess. Um, let me also post it in the, in the text chat. Um, where I can see, hey, there, there's like, the list of Ethereum Twitter accounts, and then it's Vitalik on top, and then just other people following, and they give different weights to these accounts, right? And if you know their Ethereum addresses, you could list it on our platform, and you can just like reward them with an airdrop for, you know, being useful on Twitter, right? Um, so I guess it's it's kind of a reputation, but you really. Um, I, I guess if a lot of people put up these kind of list of addresses, at some point it will become like lists will become too long, right? And we might personalize it for you, right? Like if you log into our site in the future, maybe uh, authenticate with your MetaMask, then it could show your own personal list of um, of list of addresses, really, right? It could could become something like an address book for you, and maybe this. Being, being this personal, I think it becomes more of a reputation thing, right? Like, then you have an understanding of what these lists of addresses mean. So, yeah, you could build some, like, it could represent some public reputation, but it could also be some, some more personal um, relation to you. You could even make some, like, private lists just for you, yeah, like, like the, the address book on your phone, right? Like, just you can see um, the connection between, let's say, your friend's name and their Ethereum address. Might I follow up um, sure. on this? So I imagine now that you have a script or bot or something that you tell, please collect all my Twitter followers and put them in this address list. Is this how it would work, for an example? Um, so, so right now, it really is all about like list of Ethereum addresses. So we would enable you to add metadata or like a, like a note to each of the addresses, which could be the Twitter name. But right now we really focus on like on-chain data, right? Like this um. of Ethereum addresses. Um, so I guess you could personally uh, export everybody who's following you on Twitter and then, you know, try to find their corresponding Ethereum address. Because that's where you airdrop to them, right? Like to the address. Yeah. I don't know what airdrop means, but we'll come to that later. <laughs> um, for now, so how do you get the connection between like a, some real world name and the Ethereum address? Um, yeah. Right now, we don't really have that connection at all, right? And I think what I, what I talked about earlier is that, okay, like what's an airdrop maybe <laughs> first? Um, the well, airdrop is that, hey, I, I simply sent you a token, right? I can send you one US dollar coin um, because I know you and I know your address. Uh, what if I want to send, what if I want to reward all my users of my debt, right? If I'm, uh, if I'm some financial debt, maybe I want to reward everybody, like a hundred users. Um, how do I do that? I, I need to do an airdrop. I, I need to send everybody at once, uh, like one US dollar coin. Does that make sense as definition of an airdrop? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I, I will take care of that later on. Um, so what I understood now is at, until now you don't have this link between the different types of, or the, the address and some meta, uh, information on it. Right. No, right now we just have the Ethereum addresses. And, and and the problem is that people have a lot of tokens in their wallets and they might not know 
um, if, that there is some new token, right? Like they don't get a notification on their phone that suddenly they have a new token in their wallet. Um, so the, the way to tell them would be to, you know, as, as the guy who does the airdrop, like also write a message on their Twitter or like Discord or Telegram. So you, on the airdrop means you send somebody a token and the way to tell them would mean, hey, you, you need their Twitter handle or their Telegram handle. If you actually write them, hey, you just got a token. And you can use it, you can sell it, you can use it in our, in our dApp and so on. But right now we, we only have the, the set of Ethereum addresses. Because you know, like people want to stay anonymous, like they, they usually don't want to connect their um, public persona, like their real name, or even their Twitter handle to their Ethereum address, right? Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I want to add, uh, I once read uh, a question, I don't know if it was here in Discord, uh, in our Discord, but it was the, what's the line between the privacy and uh, transparency in blockchain because of that. Uh, Girling, right now, uh, part of the blockchain and having addresses, addresses can be our identification in the in the blockchain and especially in web3 but at the same time uh you can't uh if you want you can just don't associate your legal name for example with that address but at the same time that address may talk a little bit about you for example uh if you go to scan an address and you see uh the C stack uh, token, you can see that, oh, that person works with the, uh, it's part of the trusted seed. And if it is, for example, more than a thousand C stack uh, in, the, in that address, you will see, oh, well, this person is active in the community because they, they earn a C stack. That's a way to see it. Um, yeah, th there's a, there's, this complication of blockchain where it's totally transparent. You can scan any address and see everything, everything. Like it's basically like having an open uh, bank, uh, bank statement in, in the internet. But at the same time, the legal um, information is not like necessarily associated to that address. So it's it's like <laughs> it's, it's it's an interesting thing uh, thing uh, on on blockchain uh, to have. And in terms of airdrops, yeah, it's, it's part of uh, Chris said. You can basically have a, a, an amount of tokens and have a list of people. Uh, it should be a curated uh, list. For example, members of the Trusted Seed, members of Uniswap, or any organization. And then just, for example, uh, we will send 100 C stack for every single member of that organization. So that action of sending C stack or a token to that list, it's what we, what we know as airdrop. So there's a lot of people in, in the in blockchain or in the internet because, well, they, they are not necessarily involved in blockchain but they, they are called airdrop hunter, hunters because uh, a lot of these tokens have some of them, well, almost every, every single token have a monetary value. So if I'm in one of these lists and I get these free tokens, I can just sell it. And it's a way somehow to make money. Not necessarily ethical because a lot of the people who receive these tokens are uh, members, act, active members of this community or have invested in this community, like, but yeah, there, there, that is there, there is this definition of airdrop hunter and what is an airdrop. Maybe I made it more clear. If not, it's okay. <laughs> I'm also learning here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was um, much better now. Awesome. Well, I don't know if anyone else have um, uh, any other question for Chris. Okay. <laughs> well, 
Uh, thank you, Chris. This is actually a call that uh, lasts 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And uh, again, thank you so much for presenting and bringing this project because it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, tool. Don't see it as a small tool. It is a pretty good uh, tool. Do you need any help? Like how, how many people are, are participating with you in this project? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for the invitation also. Um, right now it's uh, it's about like five people, but everybody part-time. Um, we're just wrapping up the development of the prototype, going to release it on Ring Bee, um the next couple of days. And um, then we could, yeah, get started to test it out with you guys. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to the collaboration there. There was a bunch of nice feedback I think we can work on implementing already. And um, yeah see if it's actually useful for you guys awesome let us know if you need part of the if anyone in the community <laughs> might help uh, on this thank you so much again and thank you everyone who, sure. who joined and well great left with his questions and feedback was very valued too because uh for me i'm i'm still learning too about airdrops and uh, blockchain and smart contracts it is very interesting so this is it for our call Nice. Um, thank you guys. If anyone uh, needs any help with their membership in the trusted seat, if you haven't applied for the trusted seat, you can DM Gina or me uh, if you have any questions and we can help you. We are the trusted seat gardeners <laughs> at your service. Thank you guys. Ciao. Tschüss. Cheers. Cheers.